What's going on everyone, Johnny here. I wanna give my immediate reaction to UFC 298. It just took place, it's in the books. I'm gassed right now because as many of you would know, Rob Whitaker, our boy, beat Polo Costa by decision. We're gonna be talking about that in a second. What a crazy fight. But let's quickly cover the main event because it ended in absolutely ridiculous fashion. Ilya Tapuria has just proved a lot of people wrong by knocking out Alexander the Great Volkanovsky in insane fashion in the second round. He was obviously talking a very big game in the weeks leading up to this fight. He changed his Twitter handle to say, or his Twitter bio to say, I'm already the champ. He stole Volk's title a number of occasions, especially in the press conference. He was so confident that he was going to go out there and not just beat Volk. He said, I'm going to knock him out. And what does he do in the second round? He knocks Volk out cold, absolutely cold. And I would say the first round probably went to Volk and Ilya was biding his time. He, he actually took a little bit of damage in that first round. But when he came in, he ducked Volk and then he just went left, right, waited a bit as Volk was kind of backing away. Bam, smacked him on the chin, knocks Volk out cold. Like it was instantaneous. It wasn't even kind of like the Makachev knockout with the head kick where Volk was still a little bit there, a bit more so after he got that shot. And then Makachev really came in with the ground and pound. With this one against Ilya, it was straight cold. Volk had nothing up there. He was gone. And I felt incredibly bad for Volk. But Ilya, he's proved himself. He is the real deal. He is now the champ. And man, I don't know, like that division is now completely opened up, right? The amount of fights that we are able to get now, because Volk beat everyone. He beat absolutely everyone. And now Ilya, he's undefeated. He's honestly done something very similar to what Conor McGregor did against Jose Aldo back in the day. This guy has become a star. They're going to have a freaking main or pay-per-view event in Spain for sure now. I was very impressed. And of course, I was very impressed with Ilya in his previous fights. But this, to beat Alexander Volkanovsky at his dominant weight class, obviously not the weight class where he fought Makachev, at his weight class, on his own terms, insane, bro. Like, what else can you say? Volk, I feel really bad for him. I don't know what he does next. To have two very, you know, heavy losses like that by knockout, I don't think he's going to get an immediate rematch. I think... I don't know, man. I really don't know what, what Volk does or like even what the UFC would want to do with Volk. Um, if it was like a decision loss, then maybe I could see there being a scope for an immediate rematch. But now either Volk, either he fights someone else, right? And then he gets a shot after that or he just moves up and wait if that's what he really wants to do. But honestly, man, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But let's talk about Rob Whitaker against Polo Costa. Bro, I was so freaking gassed for Rob, man. That was an absolute scrap. Polo really brought it to Rob. And if we want to go round by round, round one was probably the most kind of controversial because overall, Rob definitely got more significant strikes in, right? If you actually look at the numbers, Rob was up. And it was all until that freaking spinning kick that was just insane. Rob was, was shaky. If that was any earlier in the round, I would have been very worried. But it was kind of similar. I think it was against the Izzy fight where he got hit and rocked very late in the round. And then in this occasion, actually it was also against um, DDP as well, very similar circumstances. He got rocked but in those fights, he just couldn't recover. In this fight, he absolutely did. Round two, he went to recover. He kept getting some really nice one-two combos, blitzing Polo, really nice low calf kicks. And obviously, Polo was getting some good shots back, good leg, leg kicks back. And that his front left kick comes from out of nowhere. You see how quick it was, and Rob was really having some trouble dealing with that. But overall, Rob came back in the second. He won the third as well, in my opinion. But it was that first round, and I'm really glad there was that one judge. I can't remember who it was. But he called that first round, and he called the whole fight to Rob 30-27. That's what I would have called it. Now, obviously, I am biased, right? And, and Rob's my boy. We do a podcast together. I thought he won all those rounds. And they were obviously all very close. I understand why people thought Polo won the first, because the damage caused by that spinning kick was ridiculous. And obviously, damage drops a lot of other things in, in the UFC. But I thought overall, Rob still did enough up until that point. And then obviously from that moment on, he took the rest of the fight. And Polo absolutely had his moments, brought it to Rob. But man, what a fight, bro. What a fight. Rob won. And, and this is what I would do. Like, and, and Rob, when he comes back for the podcast, he'll give a more technical breakdown as to the fight. That's not my expertise. But what I will say, I love matchmaking. I think for sure Rob against Strickland would be great. If they're going to do another card in Australia this year, perfect. Everyone in Australia loves Strickland. Rob's obviously from here. That would be great. 
And then after that, you could arguably say that Rob is in prime position for another title shot. And if they are going to do Izzy against DDP at UFC 300, that's literally perfect for Rob. The only thing is I don't know what that does with Cannoneer. Probably Cannoneer to fight Hamzat. If Hamzat does not stay at middleweight, if he decides to drop back down, I know there's rumors that he might fight Leon at UFC 300, but he's doing Ramadan and he doesn't want to do that, right? But I would still say if he wants to stay at middleweight, him fighting Cannoneer would be a really great shout. I don't want to see him just walk in for the title. DDP against Israel would be really good to headline 300. I think it's going to be a great card if that was going to be the main event. And apparently uh, Dana's going to announce it very soon. But let me just get through recording this video and then I'll see if he's announced it afterwards. But let's talk about the other fights in the main card. Um, I want to start off obviously with Anthony Hernandez against Roman Kopliov. Dude. Hernandez was really, really impressed me. Like Roman, I thought, was doing well in the first round. He won that first round. He had some really nice body kicks in there. Hernandez had a little bit trou uh, of trouble. He was doing some nice blitzes, though. But then coming in the second round, to take down Roman, and he almost got the rear naked choke, and then Roman thought, I thought he was about to escape, and then he just cinched it in, and you saw him smiling. He's like, I bloody have this thing. He absolutely performed really well against Roman. I was impressed with him. And I, now I don't know what Roman does because he was meant to be a next big contender in the middleweight division. But now it's Hernandez's turn. What's that? His fifth win on the trot. Um, I think he's got a, a good stead to kind of maybe fight. Who should he fight next? I don't know. Maybe he should fight. I think I wrote it down here. Maybe Delizze? Maybe Delizze? Maybe Chris Curtis? I think a lot of people would like to see Hernandez fight Chris Curtis. But next up, let's talk about Marab Dvalishvili against Henry Cejudo. This went exactly the way I thought, right? Henry Cejudo, I honestly don't know why he ended up coming back. I thought maybe his he thought in his mind his return, especially against Al Jermaine, would be a little bit easier. He'd be able to walk in, grab the title, say he won the title for a third time or whatever it is, call himself quadruple C or whatever, and then leave, right? But obviously he lost that fight, and this was do or die, and he didn't get the opportunity to say that he retired and to speak in the ring afterwards. And I don't know if that was Joe Rogan's fault or, or the UFC's fault, I don't know. Um, but he got, aside from that first round, I think he won that first round, Marab just mauled him, absolutely mauled him. Marab is a dog, man. Do you remember that stage where he just lifted up Cejudo? This is Henry freaking Cejudo, bro. He just lifted him up, slammed him down. He was smiling towards Zuckerberg with that guillotine. And it's not, like, aside from that guillotine, it's not like like uh, Marab actually had that many opportunities to, to get a submission because Marab doesn't really finish, right? But he just kept on him like a dog with, the, with his punches and, and, and his clinches. It, it, Henry couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything at all. And Henry showed in the first round that he did have that power. Marab, I thought, I was a little bit worried there that maybe he was going to get knocked out. But as the fight went on, Henry was getting really tired. He's getting older now. And Marab was just mauling him, bro. Absolutely mauling him. Really, really proud of Marab. He absolutely deserved this the title shot now. And who, who's, if, yeah, so he called out Sean O'Malley, right? But O'Malley is going to be fighting Vera. And I don't know who wins in that. I mean, Vera could very well win a second time, but I think O'Malley knows what he needs to do now to beat Vera. So I reckon what we're going to see is O'Malley beat Vera and then O'Malley is going to be versing Marab. That would be an absolute great fight. And if you, if I was to give you an early prediction, I reckon Marab probably does better against, against O'Malley, unless O'Malley clips him. But we'll see. And then finally, Jeff Neal against Ian Gary. Definitely the low light of the main card, at least. Um, look, I would give it to, to Ian Gary. I think he did a little bit more. He was, he was really good at keeping his distance. And Jeff had a lot of trouble getting in. But once he got in, especially he got a couple of punches in, then he went for the clinch. I think he went for the clinch a little bit too much. He had to do more volume to show in the judges' eyes that he won that fight. I thought some rounds were very, very close. I could have given that first round to Neil, to be honest. But overall, I'm pretty happy with you know Ian Gary being announced as the winner. I think he did, did definitely deserve it. And then who did he call out? He called out freaking Covington. So... I don't know if anyone wants to see Covington against Ian Gary. It, it could be good because of the back and forth that they've had in the day. But guys, I'm happy. Rob won. I'm very upset for Volk, obviously. Ilya, though, he's the, he's the next big thing in the division. Congratulations to him. Let me know what you thought about UFC 298 in the comments below. It's in the box, and hopefully we can get Rob on maybe this week or if not next week for the next MMA Arcade podcast. So let me know what you think, and until next time, this has been Johnny. Take care of yourselves.